Hey guys, I'm here today with Paul Gore, who besides being a good friend of mine, he's a gym owner in Hong Kong and a men's VC competitor. He even placed third in Mr. Olympia in yes. 2016. Yes, yes. Yeah, and we also competed together in Mania. So anyways, I, this guy is in great shape. He's a great inspiration. I will be leaving Paul's YouTube and Instagram on the screen right now. So feel free to check him out. Yeah. And Paul asked me today to get him through an arm, science-based arm workout. And I decided that I wanted to put him through my current training protocol. So I will be showing how my training has been changing lately in terms of weights lifted and repetitions and some of the elements that I will be explaining throughout the video. So anyways, are you ready, bro? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, let's do it. Now let's go. Okay, so Paul and I started training triceps first. Perhaps for many of you this seems a bit weird as people usually associate big arms with having big biceps. And for a long time I thought so too. But the truth is that the biceps are a much smaller muscle group than the triceps. As you can see, the triceps compromises more than 50% of our upper arm, while our biceps is only somewhere around 25%. So honestly, there's really no reason to start your arm day with any other muscle group than the triceps, as this is what is going to give you a much fuller and bigger look to your arms. Here we started with a close grip bench press. The close grip really puts a lot of workload on your triceps and takes some of the work off your pecs as well. So it seems like a great exercise to activate the triceps. Also this exercise is quite effective as it allows you to lift relatively heavier weights and as some other reliable research shows, triceps seem to respond well to heavy loads. So that's why we did 4 sets of 5 to 8 reps and increased weight as much as we could handle for every set. So the heavier it got, the less reps we could do. Please note though that this exercise can feel a little bit uncomfortable on the wrist. So if that's the case for you, you may want to adjust your hand position in outwards a little bit more. The second exercise we performed was a bench dip, which is one of the same exercises I have previously shown in an arm video. However, this time I'm showing you my real workout with real workload. So here I really feel like um, I could have done better in terms of elbow positioning. I think as I was getting heavier, it was hard to maintain my form. However, I came to the conclusion that sacrificing some of my technique ended up being useful as I was able to go heavier and harder. However, with all the exercises and muscle groups, this may not be the best as it can lead to injury. So it really depends on how comfortable and safe you feel. Again, this exercise can be a little tough on wrists and shoulders, so please make sure you get used to it first before placing plates on your legs. You can also see how Paul and I perform this exercise a bit differently in terms of wrist positioning and range of motion of the exercise. And that will be something for you to decide as well, depending on what you can handle and what is more appropriate for your condition. For number three, we decided to change it up a little bit and add a superset. So basically we started with this overhead dumbbell extension variation on the preacher curl and then we immediately followed with a resistance bend extending tricep extension to failure to get the triceps to fatigue as it was our last tricep exercise. I have been using bends for a long time on my triceps and I can really tell you that it's been a piece of gear worth buying. The range of motion and the constant tension on the muscles makes it increasingly effective. For exercise 4, we moved to training biceps. Again, we kept on lifting heavy and with lower reps. For biceps, lifting heavy makes a lot of sense. As explained by this article from the strengthandconditioning.com website, more than 60% of the biceps are composed mainly by muscle fibers type 2, which are better activated with heavy loads and the standing barber curl makes it a great option to do so. Also, with this exercise, we try to pay special focus on the eccentric phase of the movement, which in basic words refers to the lowering of the bar. As this research paper explains, eccentric contractions may have the ability to enhance strength, power, 
muscle coordination, prevent injuries, and of course, increase muscle mass. As you can see, having a training partner when doing eccentrics can be useful as he or she can give you a hand in raising the bar up and then you can try your best to lower yourself to the best of your ability. So for our fifth exercise, we decided to come up with this sort of DIY weighted belt from a chain I bought from the hardware store and I added it to a weightlifting belt and it actually worked pretty well. So chin-ups are different to pull-ups in a sense that we are using a supinated or underhand grip and not a pronated grip. This hand positioning activates the biceps to a much larger extent, which makes the chin-ups a lot better than pull-ups if the aim of course is to work on our biceps. Honestly, by this time of the workout, our biceps started to fatigue, which led to a much lower performance than I expected. It was quite challenging to get 4 to 5 reps with full range of motion, so we ended up increasing our resting period for an extra minute to recover a bit more and finish the workout strong. Last, we finished up with a super set of hammer curls and reverse cable curls. Hammer curls get their name from the way the dumbbell is gripped. This neutral grip well activates the biceps but also the brachioradialis, which is this muscle in the forearm. We try to make the exercise more fun by alternating between single arm curls and one double curl. After that was done, we jump onto the pronated cable curls, which is an exercise that doesn't really hit the biceps as much as the previous exercises I've been showing you but it is very effective at activating the brachialis which is this small muscle here that sits under the biceps and that if you work it and develop it it will help you raise your biceps more and give the front of your upper arms more size overall but because it is such a small muscle in my opinion you shouldn't spend as much time on them which is why we performed it right at the end of the workout so that's it for today guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new from it. If you still have some doubts or you want to ask me some questions, please leave them in the comment section below or you can follow me on Instagram as well. And before I go, I would like to wish each of you a happy new year, I really hope this is a great year for all of you guys and thank you for your support during 2017. That was an amazing year, we grew so much in this channel and that's all because of you. I just wanted you to know how grateful we are because of your constant support which is why we will be coming up with much more content this new year. Hopefully we will be more frequent so we can provide you with everything you need to succeed within your fitness journey. So thanks so much again guys and I will see you in my next video. Take care.